Welcome everyone. Okay, today again, we don't get um, another frontline show. I don't see people, they come in. Please, uh, when I help you for share the link. If you get a question or a comment that you want me to look at, please um, just put it in the comment box. Today I wear my glasses, so I'm able to read fine. We said they make... Um, We said they copy, we said they copy uh, Prince Chroma. I keep helping for share the link. We won't forget the conversation on institutional dilemma in Sierra Leone. You can also tell me in the comment section, say, say you watch we from. I see we don't get um, people coming in. We just we just don't finish for watch um, the U.S. and Netherlands game. Quite an interesting. Uh,
Yes, thank you everyone. Um, today, on Saturday, um, a new month. I think these are the first program we get on in, in this December. And we want to continue with daily conversation on the Frontline Show. Um, today, we want to talk about institutional decline or institutional dilemma in Sierra Leone. How we institutions, um, we for protect with democracy, with democratic institutions, them, um, become comatose, if you, if you like. They don't already uh, enter into coma. We have um, arrived at a position or in a situation at a time in the country inside the, the institutions we uphold with democracy, both the institutions we constitute, the executive branch of government, the police department, um, the, all the other institutions with the under um, the executive branch of government not able for function. We see what will happen with the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone. We see what can happen with the NCRA. We see what can happen with um, the police and how, how police not able to protect people like many more, but um, they don't become part of this whole area of institutions where they try for further the agenda of the regime and its allies. So um, we don't talk so much about the dictatorship of the Madabio regime. And for the most part, when we talk about the dictatorship of, the, of, of Madabio, we attempt to single out Madabio, we single out the ministers, we single out the police and all that. Way. It's very um, usual for me we look at dictators and bad government by just looking at the president, the ministers, heads of uh, parastatals, heads of institutions, where they're under uh, uh, the presidency, where they're under the executive branch of government. And sometimes people, they talk about the judiciary, you know, they give you justice. Judges, they know they dispense justice, that if you don't get money, you don't get justice. And uh, you don't get power, you don't get justice. You know, or in the case where we've been talking about uh, parliament, a dysfunctional institution, parliament, a rubber stamp parliament. So we want to take that conversation beyond just these ordinary statements around um, parliament or the function according to the, uh, to the expectation of the public or whether the judiciary is actually fulfilling its role for um, provide correct interpretation, help for uphold the law, help for uphold the rule of law by interpreting the law in a correct way, uh, dispensing justice in the correct way, and helping uh, ordinary citizens for whole leaders accountable by understanding that we can go in a court and get justice. So the question is not so much about why we why we institutions of the function, now how these institutions have not been functioning, and who are responsible for some of these situations. So when we talk about institutional dilemma, basically now that we don't come to a point now say parliament now the executive branch of government the judiciary, they are all in a situation where nobody not seem for no, or even those in government have lost ideas in terms of how they go around the country. Not just because they don't get ideas, because they never intended to do good. And I, and I, and I repeat, we're not gonna talk about the dictatorship of the Madabio regime, we're not gonna talk about the collapse of the economy, we're not gonna talk about the violation of human rights, we're not gonna talk about violence in a saloon today. We, we, we avoid for talk about the role of parliament, and the role of parliamentarians, both in the opposition and in the ruling party, in the creation of the climate of repression as alone, how they're responsible for that. We're not gonna talk about the lack of justice, the lack of the violation of the rule of law, the absence of separation of powers by thinking that Madabi and I hold all the judges, they are all the parliamentarians put on in pocket. And we think, say, because we they live under a repressive president, dictator, monster, devil, we're not mad at you. So everybody in the country is afraid. They're afraid for their lives and they're afraid for their families and lives. And some of them they like you now all. And they talk, say, would you make children and they talk? Now because you're not in the country. No, now because some of we um we deny we we they see through the machination of these politicians. They are not they are not under risk. I will tell you now. Members of parliament, the judges, and many of these individuals who have led you to believe that they are powerless, they are faced with a monster who is not upholding the law, and then they, then they live in a salon with their families, they are part of the problem. They are not victims of the problem. They are orchestrators of the problem, are protagonists of the problem, the protagonists of the crisis. This is not, this not, the, this not the, the thing we are not able to uh, uh, find difficult to talk about. Part of the reason is because many of these people are your party members, party leaders, party, party benefactors. 
you don't when you get a bearing, you go to the honorable, it takes one million leon, it give you hey, the honorable. So even if that you are confronted with the the danger that the activities and action of that honorable member of parliament is causing to you, your family, the country, you find it difficult to talk about it because at one at what point at one point or another, you don't get school fees problem for your picking, you don't go there, they don't take pinch small part the money in the thief, then give you. Take small and the money we're supposed to provide uh, the common good for everybody and give you. So today, I want to talk about um, uh, what I call institutional dilemma. How we institutions don't enter by their own making; they don't enter into a crisis of their own of what they're able to solve. You know, they don't enter into a triangle of, of a, a dilemma, and part of that, and a triangle of opportunism where parliament, members of parliament in the opposition and the ruling party, together with Madabio, decide for make a bargain against the interest of the, of the public, the national interest. And since we discover that and begin to talk about them and bring them to light, June to now, the country has not been stable. The institutions have not been functioning. And a lot of people now, crowds of people across uh, government, when we say government, we're talking about now the three arms of government, both the executive that is made up of SLP people like Madabio and the people that we appoint, and even including APC people, because I know the APC people and now they work for Madabio. They want the way declare themselves openly. And they want the way hide we either in the inside parliament or outside of parliament where they help um this process. What you make and this not two way don't they happen, but what you make this one more obvious now because we don't determine so they bring everybody like I'm telling at the Luma. So now we see them and know say that so politics they operate in a saloon. That these politicians, in as much as they can claim say that they for their interest, they are actually scheming and working overnight and over time against the, the national interest. So I want to spend some time today as part of the ongoing conversation of state capture for highlight um, what we call the apex of, of, of the crisis, which is the dilemma that these institutions have entered into in the, into the process of um, denying um, Sierra Leoneans their right to you know, the, the kind of government that they want, the quality of our democracy. So I, I will take a break now, then work on now. I hope for spend a few minutes today for talk about this because we, I know say this nice soccer season, uh, football season, the World Cup is, is, is already, we, we, we only watch the World Cup. I usually do not um, uh, pay attention to football that much. Uh, I used to be um, a very ardent uh, fan of football, I started to call it America soccer, if you, if you like. But that was back in the day when I've been there, uh, primary school to high school. But over time, I, I, I got, you know, I lost interest because of the noise attached to it. But I enjoy. So I do not actually watch the uh, Premier Leagues or the European Leagues per se. But I make I make sure that anybody who knows me knows say I know they miss the country competitions, the the continental competitions. And by that, I mean the African Nations Cup, the European Nations Cup. Uh, the Cup America and all of this, because I, I like seeing countries competing. In a way, it, it, it plays into some kind of uh, nationalism. They tell you about what it means for support a country, you know, how struggling countries, they fight for the name of their countries, people, they cry because their country lost. It, it, it speaks to a spirit of nationalism, what makes people, you know, what makes people identify with the country. It's both its culture, its politics, its economics, a range of issues. So, so football as a cultural activity is one of those um activities to which people express their patriotism their their attachment and their loyalty to a country that's what you see in this competition so now one of the reasons we make making watch i can watch the world cup i can watch um the african nations cup because you see citizens struggling and defending and supporting their countries they, they, they use energy and brain and skill and tactics and technique for put their country forward and raise their countries countries flags so I like to see that. And this is not the season where we get right now. Football, the global competition of, of, of uh, world football, you know, the, the, the World Cup, every every country that is successful going there is representing to the extent that now they say, oh, we support this country because I'm from West Africa. We support this country because now they're from Africa. We support this country because now, now they are underdogs. They are from, you know, so all kinds of politics and definition of nationalism, patriotism, Pan-Africanism and all of these ideas, they, they manifest themselves without we knowing. So this tells you that in everything that is world, there has to be an idea, an ideology. You don't understand a worldview, how you see yourself in the world, 
your role in the world and what contribution you want to make both to humanity to the world and to young people them that's what football um in my own thinking is, is showing it's, it's a way of, of showing how individuals seek to contribute to society to their countries their show of of uh, good citizenship their loyalty to their countries and things like that so you listen to the commentary they you hear about this thing the struggle which country to represent some people you get for example when cameroon and switzerland were, were uh having a match the first goal that was scored by switzerland against cameroon was scored by a cameroonian or somebody an african a black man born in uh who's who is carrying citizenship of switzerland so we scored the ball usually when, when footballers scored then they, then they run all around but he was taught some kind of uh when you look at the game this young man score but he's stiff enable for celebrate self because you know he's, he's caught between a dilemma now he does score against in in country because his parents or, or in papana from cameroon then now he, he play against cameroon under normal circumstances this individual will have been playing for cameroon the whole set of politics around it but you see the dilemma that this footballer was was caught in score is that it's not enable move and company and commit and then celebrate with them that is unusual sometimes when people scored and they run around the field some they pull them closer to you see how cameroon uh, uh abubakar did yesterday so looking at these kinds of things it tells about the importance of countries the importance of citizenship the reason why we need good governments cameroon for example has been under dictatorship for many years one of the oldest dictators and paul Bia travel around the world, ship money, going to Switzerland. When I see this video, when they pass around how Cameroonians are even attacking their officials outside of Cameroon because they are dissatisfied with the nature of government. Maybe if they can get a good government, quality government, where they encourage citizens to contribute, you cannot have a, somebody of Cameroonian descent born outside of Cameroon um, bringing glory to, to Switzerland as opposed to Cameroon, help for bring down the, the, the flag of Cameroon in exchange for another country. So when governments frustrate citizens out of their country, they are basically forcing brain, brain drain. They drive the skills out. Those skills could be skills for way for advanced sport, way for advanced education, way for advanced agriculture, way for advanced economy. In all aspects, the country they lost. So th this is what you also see. When you look at the these global competitions, people competing, showing talents at the global stage, that's what you see. We have our kids. Who will identify with america but they will not identify with sierra leone why because some of us have been forced out of the country by the terrible nature of our governments they are woeful performance in the in economics in education in everything you become if you want to get better education you got to move out you want to get higher education you got to move out of the, of the country you can't you get better education you want to go back you cannot go back because the country is bad off it's worse off the economy you know all of these things until we able to get governments right we will just admire other countries. We will be building citizens with their talents and their knowledge and their skills for benefit other countries. This is why some of us are concerned. We want to have a situation where our kids will be able to contribute to our own motherland, to our own countries, and feel proud about it. Not as a charity case, but as, as, as a showcase of human talent. When you, look the, when you look at the World Cup, the greater majority of the excellent footballers, the greater majority of them are from Africa or of African descent. But you have fewer African countries performing, uh, participating in the in the competition. But the bulk of the players, the way you look, the majority of them, the most excellent ones who have scored the most excellent goals, if you look, they are basically people whose parents are from Africa or whose origin is from Africa. But look at the African environment today, including Sierra Leone. So this is, not the, this is not the reason why governments have to be gotten right. And we cannot get government rights if we do not get institutions right. And it's different to just say we are for institutions. So now, now that kind of conversation, this is why I decided to talk about institutional dilemma. How did we got, get to a point where our institutions have lost credibility? How the politicians did not destroy their institutions there? And why it's important for us to identify these developments? And I want to talk about the judiciary and parliament for one specific reason, just simple example. A few days ago, we've been seeing, they say, they fed in a parliament. Why? They say, Mother B1 for imposed proportional representation on, on the country, for change the nature of the election. In my last discussion, I tell them, I say, that is not uh, true. The proportional representation 
is to the benefit of members of parliament. It's not to the benefit of the presidency. It's not got nothing to do with presidential election. It has everything to do with the parliamentary election, parliamentary representation, the legislative assembly. That's what proportional representation, regardless of whatever kind you use, whether in a district block or any kind of percentage, it has to do with how parties are represented in the in the assembly, in parliament, in, in, in the legislative assembly, like that. So if Madabio want for imposed proportional representation, we understand that members of parliament and don't work together with the ruling party for right into the new law, for change the electoral law, and now for repeat that of last week. So this week, as we before we come to this Saturday, this week where they done so, we see lawyers in the opposition, APC lawyers then, and I talk about JFK, uh, Joseph Kamara, uh, Ade Makoli, uh, Wara Serikama, and Abdullah Conte. They say they don't take um, Mad, uh, the non going at the Supreme Court for seek an interpretation regarding the unconstitutionality of the president's proclamation. Basically, then they say the non cargo case in a court against proportional representation. It's a continuation of the same facade we we see in a parliament. It's meaningless. But not to just the meaningless, the, fruit, the fruitless nature of the of the action. Now, why they decide to operate that way? Now I want to talk about but tell them the dilemma. Why? Because they are in a dilemma. They don't know how to get out of this. Because we don't so we don't highlight so much the the corruption in parliament and the lack of uh, the honesty of the parliamentarians in the opposition and how they don't come sell out the, the, the democracy and and help Madabio for build a dictatorial landscape. So parliamentarians they feel the need say they're not going to help Madabio again if they're not restored their own credibility because the credibility of members of parliament and the credibility of parliament as an institution don't become so exposed that people are not know are useless institutions. They know the function again, useless in this case, I mean, they are not of good use. They are not serving the purposes for which they are supposed to uh, exist when I set them for. Parliament is not functional. So because it is functional, it means it's of no use. So hence the word useless. So now that I, 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 I try to say. So in this case, parliament and members of parliament, their legitimacy is zero now because people do not see the level of complicity. So. For make the agreement, for make parliamentarians now able to help Madabio for carry out his second term, they need first and foremost for become for be for be seen as credible people. And one way they want for build that credibility now, but tell the Sierra and the fool the and they say that they're under risk and they're under attack. Then they then life they are at risk. In fact, they want for pass law. They, if they're not greedy, they pull those and they bring police in the parliament, they try to attack them. Um, in fact, they don't declare, they not they like you and say they don't arrest three parliamentarians there. Some of the parliamentarians they call people, they all say they need to hide in, they need to hide in. Now, what do we see? They say police don't invite them. Next thing we hear, Abbas Bundu say he don't, don't give a ruling. In fact, he don't ban three members of parliament for, for enjoy them, them benefit. So, members of parliament say, Well, now see now, if they don't, don't sell out, then they, 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 they know who they ban them, so no, they who sell them. So, it is fake. But I want to address, analyze that particular thing, they will tell you now why didn't they behave that way. They for giving the impression say they are under attack. For giving her the impression, say they are threatened, their life has been threatened. Remember, parliament get less than six months now for make parliament close. The life of this parliament is done. It's done. Whether they threaten a parliament now, they do any other thing. There's nothing again that the members of parliament can do. Anything again with the benefit of the country. What they are fighting for is how to regain their credibility and make them go back in a parliament for the next five years. That's what they are fighting for. They are not fighting to protect the constitution. They are not fighting to protect our democracy. They are not fighting for good governance. They are fighting to protect their own interests now, to save their own credibility, which they have sold out. Okay, that's number one. So the next thing again, we don't show say the judiciary is nothing but an institution that has been used progressively by Mada Bio in association with in, with, with, with the UN, uh, sell out opposition members in parliament for muzzle the real opposition, for bring cases against people that win a real opposition, opposition, accuse them of corruption, accuse, try to hold them, seize properties and all of that, when actually there has been more massive stealing of public money on the matter that parliamentarians in the opposition have not raised an issue about. So now, by opposition members, opposition members of the APC, then lawyers and take case now court, say they want the Supreme Court for interpret uh, whether a, a rule against proportional representation, where proportional representation are for them, the parliamentarian, really. Now, it's also an effort to rescue the image of the judiciary. Now, an effort for making them save the judges, save the judiciary from the supposed uh, credibility crisis where, where the judiciary does suffer from. So, that, that is what I'm, that's what I call the dilemma. Mother Bill 
in credibility and in claim for fight corruption that they don't shoot in a, in a fake. So the executive branch of government has no credibility, both within the country and in the eyes of the international community. We don't shoot the executive, the president, and the rest of the ministers. They've just been running a facade. They are not committed to fighting corruption. They are not committed to the rule of law and everything. Now, we also show say this situation exists because parliament aid and abet that corruption. Then we also show say the judiciary has not been working correctly other than being used as a tool by these two institutions, the, 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 the parliament and the executive branch for Mosul opposition at the country and stifle free speech. Now, all these institutions again, and the people away there inside, they, they fed before this government in time, they do before the election they come for making them save their young credibility. This is what I call the dilemma. And it's a difficult thing for them for do because if you know we don't do anything good in the last four to five four years six months now now you want for sure we say you 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 you're credible you correct you don't stand up for the constitution so this is what i want to talk about i want to analyze them and show and contrast these developments and show now why both the court action taken by the apc lawyers to the supreme court if you say the, the, the it's really even an action and the the supposed fight in a parliament and abbas bundu in so-called decision are the same they get same purpose the purpose here is to rescue the opposition in parliament their image their, their credibility crisis and also rescue the judiciary and at the expense also of the opposition and the country that i want to talk about i'm not going to spend more time now this this discussion i intend for continuum but why i decide for even broadcast early because i realized there's a major tournament coming up there is a major game coming up Argentina will be having another game. So myself one for watch them. And I know say plenty of people where they watch we again get for watch them. So I'll take a small break. I'll come back and then um throw some light on this. First, I will discuss um how parliament and the fight in the parliament and about the decision that just joke. And I will tell you now what in parliamentarians they don't do. We make that one, we are the crime, the scene, the actual scenes that parliaments have committed. I will remind you now of that. Then after that. I will come and talk about again how the action taken by JFK, Ab Ablai Conte, and the other APC lawyer then are just the same joke as what is happening in Parliament. If they really want to take action, what are the issues that they will have taken to court? And when they don't go to court? And why that action taken to court is not to the benefit of the country, it's to the benefit of Mother Bio in the end. I will, I will show that. They have a right to argue otherwise. I also have the responsibility to explain how I see things. And I don't blame me why I did talk about this because my my you know every citizen has a right and a responsibility for assess the activities that are happening in the country and at my own vantage point i am able to see some of these things or see through some of these things so uh make an always time i will come back just now take a small break do you want to share the um uh link invite more people i know this abuse a day all of us i just want to uh, thank those who are already here and hoping that um, we could also make this conversation available on audio uh, and share them on WhatsApp for people who are busy with other activities will be will have the opportunity of hearing the conversation and maybe they can have their own input or their own responses to what we're saying or learn from it as well. Okay, so um, make us if I read some of the comments them small and see who and who is here. I see Muhammad Ali. Um, hello, sir. Um, Alex Smith, Media House, very dedicated uh, follower of, of our conversations. Thank you uh, for being that dedicated. We want to tell you all thank you and recognize the 
continuous uh, dedication of we uh, friends. Nepotism is a serious challenge facing this country. Yes, that's a correct thing. Uh, Teresa Benjamin Williams, um, Cheryl Jalo, may Allah bless you, sir. Ibrahim Sisi said things are getting difficult for the country, and I'm afraid for some miscalculation from our politicians. We are in the same unfortunate situation from our recent past. Uh, definitely, myself agree. Mr. Bar, the Biden administration will be hosting the USA Africa Summit. Hopefully, Mada Bio is not invited, or can you comment on it? Of course, um, so much is, uh, yes, global African leaders. Uh, at this point, I think a, a lot of people are aware about the situation in Sierra Leone, and it's a concern to many people. Mm. Um, good evening, everyone. Okay, so make we not spend more time. I know say, uh, plenty of people get for wait for the game that is coming up. Um, this week we passed, so if I remember, there was a fight, supposed fight, what I call a, a drama that happened in parliament. What was the drama about? Members of parliament in the opposition say they have brought in um, what, whether it's a legal, but the fact of the matter, they, think, they believe Mada Bio and the SLPP are trying to impose proportional representation on the country. Basically, they want to change the electoral system from an, a constituency-based election so um, a proportional system of, of representation. Proportional system of, of representation, we'd already explained to Una, now where uh, people vote for the party and the party decide whether from the district or what is, who should represent the party. Now you imagine the APC is getting into a convention. Uh, the party's executive was dismantled by a court, Fisher. And all of the lawyers they are with the represent Una, so we go and say that they fight for Una, so they are they are friends with Fisher. In fact, now the same one we talk say Fisher not supposed for you know qualify for practice law. That's alone the question is is his qualification to practice law. And at the same Fisher, he not only serve when the SLPP can not only serve as a prosecutor for prosecute Herbert George Williams and uh, all these other APC politicians, including Paulo Conte, but they moved him to becoming a judge. And the capacity as a judge, he dismantled the extant executive of the APC and then appointed a caretaker committee, which was largely made up of members of parliament appointed by your parliamentary leader. So we don't raise the question in the past if Cherry Kuku, uh was actually committed to democracy in the country, was committed to the APC, and even they against uh, the use of state institutions for destroy democracy, he would not have accepted the court's decision for make him. Um, a stakeholder, a major stakeholder of the interim governance transition committee. And since its constitution, since they appoint that committee, the APC entered into more crisis, administrative crisis, to the extent that the party was not only paralyzed, the party became unable to defend the interest of its own members, the interest uh, of the, the sector of the population that the country where they represent. And, and and that means they not they not even deploy people for for monitoring the registration process. The party has no way of finding out whether its members and supporters or people who want to vote for them are able to register and also vote. Even to the extent where two hundred and fifty thousand people more than that have been deleted from the provisional voters register, the party cannot take action. He, as the parliamentary leader, cannot take action in defence of the party's interest. This not only will. Anybody who does not want to recognize this as an as a, as a indication of a compromised politician will be doing uh, disservice. And this is not alone. The entire uh, members of parliament, that the same one decide for changing the election law of 2012, for bringing a public election law this year, 2022, and they're not been telling about the content of the law. We take credit for bringing that to light and showing how members of parliament and the presidency we are working to give Mada Bio a second term. We say one way we the one for Duana for suppress voters, for make sure voters in areas where the opposition has a strong presence, especially in Western area, in Freetown, in the Northwest region, in the North and other parts of the country, and believe say if people are registered for voting, will likely vote against Mada Bio, then for prevent them from voting. Now, registration term Wahala. Problem with fight people to register, even when they announce registration, people will register, we fight and register by force through their own determination. Then pictures they not come, then some of the names they're not complete. The data is basically incomplete after all that fight to fight so for make people to register. For the first time, we we'll never get this trouble for register. 
na first time na iletoa commission the big people una can register una can register una can register now people and turn up for register through we own effort for educate people about registration the electoral commission register people eh? then produce a provisional register the people who register the name they not inside the register How, and then people they are now with the name not in the register they get registration slip say they register ECS and no show we say then people are with the name not in the because they register two times because for them prison two they accuse people of double registration in the register that has been exhibited no side of the way somebody talks say I see my name come two ten or three ten. What do people say? I register, but my name not come. Or my name come, or I see name with you, but my name with picture not there. Because when you see a name and you not see picture, you don't go say that you name that. Or my picture come, but me not to my name, then put that the picture. So basically, the, we have a corrupted provisional voters register. Even the ECSL don't accept say the provisional register was is problematic. Their argument is they, they use two systems. They say they get voters the way they named it at the uh, NCRA, then get the one the way they at the ECSL, the NEC registration. And we've been talking say ECSL and NCRA not for be together. Even our members of parliament tell them when I say they don't, they don't make law, they don't pull that in the law. You end up in a lie, they lie. So if members of parliament can lie to you about the content of a law which they said does not have NIN, does not have NCRA, does not have proportional representation that lie about that how would i would believe them say when they say they're not fed in the parliament they want for they fight for protect the constitution and protect democracy for helping mother before pass a law we will prevent people and for register what if parliamentarians will get out of there then self will get access to parliament by making sure they bring in a proportional representation system where smaller parties and and the current members of parliament will be able to elect themselves to parliament to an end to a threshold that will allow possibly cancer we get 11 percent or thereabout for going to parliament in the case of the ngc a benefit to them in fact during the debate honorable mario of the ngc was expressed support for the for the for the uh, proportional representation the ngc has no pretense about the fact say, that they appreciate proportional representation they want that so what's not this hypocrisy on the part of members of parliament for saying they fight against proportional representation? So they fight against proportional representation. Make we even say proportional representation is, is being imposed. How you go guarantee people level vote? How you, regardless of the kind of system that you want to use in an election, it is of no importance if people are supposed to vote, not get the opportunity and the right for vote. If you don't get voters for register, you don't get the correct voters register, even if in a constituency election, not a proportional representation, which guarantee you guys say you members them uh, people for vote they go able for vote now you supporters eh? majority of the apc supporters in freetown or citizens of sierra leone in freetown and other parts of the country that are believed to be apc strongholds or opposition strongholds have problem with their right to vote they have registered they, are, they have not found their names in the register some of them some of them have their names deleted some of them their biometric data are not, not complete so which one the members of parliament fight for? Forget a credible voters register or for fight for the kind of electoral system. Now make we say, we, not even an electoral, not even a proportional representation. How now, how the 250,000 voters, more than 250,000 voters, will not remove from the register, how they will be for vote if you miss yourself when I, when I kill proportional representation? When I go to court for, against proportional representation, but when I not go to court for making the people and get the right for register. We are not going to go ECSL in a court because ECSL don't thief over ten million dollars who don't provide the evidence. We are not take action for say we are go halt ECSL the registration. Then they register people in half and half. The APC lawyer there, they get plenty lawyers in IP. They get past fifty lawyers, each one of them. In fact, what did APC go to court for? Cherry Coco in your own lawyer way appoint, where they appoint for represent them at the interim governance transition committee Alpha Jalo Alpha Alpha Wet if Nasona the caller. Winner Cherry Coco, his own brother. And by the way, they are all uh, in the same law firm. If them people they care about democracy, they care about the election, they care about APC coming to power in 2023, you don't care to go ECSN a court to single lawyer by himself with your law firm. They don't care to go ECSN a court from the very point where they know see ECSL the register, then they rotate do rotational registration two weeks here, two weeks here and there. No correct machine. Some side away and go to some center. Camera no day. The machine no the work. The scanner they know the work. Alpha Jalo, you know, can go 
when I tell you Kukuni Law Farm Ideo, the law firm that he represents that he's working, is part is is in partnership with, with the APC parliamentary leader. So that APC lawyer them. In fact, it's a law firm where Adi Macaulay is currently working. Adi Macaulay where they fight for being secretary general is part of that law firm. Now, this APC lawyer then, they not take case under that would say for going to court to, for take a, action against ECSA. Say ECSA, the conduct registration for this enfranchised people and suppressed voters. What did Alpha Jalo do? Alpha Jalo take APC in a court. The interim committee, you say the interim committee, they know the function. They are so-called interim chairman, know the function. Well, way by the way, they are all part of the problem. They are all the both factions. Now, factions away disabled the party. He took the APC to court to Fisher. He made Fisher interpret the orders with the illegal orders, the illegal judge Fisher's illegal order where he gets more power the partner over the committee was given his own the lawyer, his nominee, who is working in his own law firm. His law firm took the party to court to Fisher for interpretation of the of the APC order, but the, but the law firm not take the ECSL in the court. Then they, they, they don't even need for pay lawyer. They are lawyers, they get law firms, and they get other lawyers working under them. They have everything, they get secretaries. They will have filed papers to the to the court asking the court for put an injunction against ECSL from carrying out an illegal registration with disenfranchised people. And they never did that. In fact, they went quiet, they all hide, they all go under bid. In fact, they may even promote the idea, say, uh, not just technical glitch. This is the what they do. So they did not go to court to help the people, their supporters, their party to have their supporters and register, but they went to court to disable the party from further functioning and even defending. At the same time, they were lying that they have uh, their, their members and supporters across uh, registration centers. More than 85% of registration centers never had an APC agent. They not get no, no data of registration will take place. If you challenge them, ask them now, may them provide data where they challenge the ECSL uh, uh, record. In fact, that the very people in Bambi, they talk, say, we come for extension. We'll talk, we say, the time is insufficient. And they suggest two days. They were the first people to announce two days extension. They are functioning. They were helping the ECSL to disenfranchise their own supporters. Why? Many of them know, say, they are young. They are between their 30s to their 55, between 35 to 55. Now, the people in this way think, say, they are the younger generation in the APC who have overthrown they are geronto class. The people that are the young, that are the young mentors in the party, then they don't, they don't use Madabio for arrest the party, disable the party, so they could prepare themselves to become the next government after Madabio in 2028. They do not care if you if Madabio is killing citizens, is suppressing now 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 the ordinary people, and you are being used as pawns, as sacrifice as, as, as chickens, sacrifice chickens. They don't care about their lives. They never went to court. They're not ever going to ask, ask these APC lawyers with all their law firms, from JFK to Abdullah Conte to all of these people. By the way, well, if we talk about bad constitution, the people who wrote this constitution, one of them is Abdullah Conte. The other one, in the parliament, as illegal speaker, uh, 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 Abbas Bundu. They are now coming to talk about it. And in the past, from 1991 to now, they have not, even the little effort that was made under Anes Kuromar to revise the constitution and reduce the draconian provisions written into this constitution by these old lawyers at the time they were APC. Old lawyers, Abbas Bundu and Abdullah Conte inclusive, they know now effort to address the constitutional crisis and constitutional, the bad provisions that they wrote into the law. They, they, they knew what they were doing in 1991 and they know what they are doing today. If them be know what they do in 1991 as young men, uh, middle-aged men, we just start their political career, start their lives, what will they not do at the three light of their age? They tell when they head to the grave now. The amount of time we then get for leave, if far less than the amount of time where they don't leave, tell when they write the nineteen twenty one constitution. That nineteen twenty one constitution is is the danger that we that we face with today. Just one phrase where 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 Anas Kuruma used the supreme executive authority now used for sack Samsumana and create a whole constitutional crisis with the support of these very people. Abdullah Conte, by the way, wrote an opinion against that. Now here they are. They sat down looking at the progressive destruction progressive the addition of more draconian actions and, and violation of that constitution now then now, now they're saying they're going to court they never went to court because to defend the right of people to vote so which one more important the kind of represent the kind of election way for take members in a parliament or the opportunity where citizens then get 
for exercise than franchise. We come to the country, what do we care about? Now we write for vote and choose who we vote for. So regardless of the kind of election that you are talking about, whether a constituency-based election, proportional representation, first past the post system, indirect, direct or direct form of election that you talk about, it will be meaningless if the citizens who have the right to choose, who have the right to vote either for a party or for an individual, whether an independent candidate or party candidate or for party or for whatever system, if you're not getting the right for vote, what are you talking about? Are you talking about an election? No, you're talking about yourself. You're talking about yourself. You're talking about how you want to be, how you want to go to parliament. You're talking about whether you should be elected through a, a constituency-based election or you should be elected through a district block system through a party list. That's what you're talking about. You're not talking about the country. You're talking about yourself, members of parliament. You are not supposedly fighting in parliament because you are defending the interest of voters. Our interest as ordinary citizens is the right to vote, the franchise. And don't let you what we get, the opportunity for vote for one candidate or one party or not for vote self, but we get the right for vote. So or vote against all of this part by spoiling the ballot, say at the council all the wire. So if you do not have, if you do not have the right to vote, you do not have the right to vote, the opportunity to vote is taken away from you. Which way you want me a lawyer for defend? The right of you, the individual, for choose whether you want to vote for Cherry Coco or vote for Madabio or vote for uh, uh, Abdul Kabo or vote for JFK or vote for Abdullah Conte or the other lawyer there, or then lawyer there, then, then you right for decide which kind of system will carry in the parliament. So both the parliamentary action and the court action are the same. They are fighting for one thing. They are fighting for the form of electoral system. And that form of electoral system can either be, in the case of parliament, as we have it, a single member constituency election system, or an election that will return multiple members based on a percentage threshold decided by the party, which is what proportional representation is about. And proportional representation, you know, get nothing for do with the presidential election. You get for do with how we will elect members of parliament, whether a true single member or the party list, in this case, district block system or other form of percentage that will be decided by um, the, the electoral commission. So when members of parliament, they tell them, I say, by standing up, supposedly standing up against proportional representation, whether they actually want her, is to their own benefit. They are basically trying to use that for telling us, say, they're not sell out. Because Mother Bill, it depends on these members of parliament. He has depended on them in this, in this last four years for everything that has happened in the country. Now the very members of parliament allow or pass a law, we don't, we don't lead to um, two currencies in the country. That the very members of parliament also participate in the process of so-called censors. They say the fight against censors. That the very members of parliament don't pass all these dangerous laws that we talk about, from the public elections law, the we get the NIN and NCR. That the very members of parliament also pass um, the the central, the national security central intelligence act. We don't by we in a law where they allow people for even raid the house without a warrant and and do all that here. So these policies and and programs, not for owner. Not in the way, actually, they violate with democracy and the constitution. Yeah, so like I say, the members of parliament, if they really, if they really care about democracy and care about the constitution, they will not sit together and pass a public elections law. What we're gonna know about the public elections law? What is the Because we highlight and we report about that, we talk about and we 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 make sure that everybody look at parliament ready debate. Not to then tell them for, not to then invite the the country for look at parliament. We invited the whole world to look at parliament when it comes to the public elections bill. Now we've been telling them, we call the members of parliament and share, not the members of parliament been mobilizing and say, we want to call Abbas Budu, we call Mada Bio and text them for say, make, make, you know, bring this law in a parliament. Now we, ordinary citizens, I am part of those people who did that. Or at the forefront of the group of people who did that. Now we do them. And for that, what did we get? Insults from members of parliament. 
insults, threatening remarks, and cause cause that we get from that. Mami cause. So if you're members of parliament, we are really genuine and serious about the constitution. At that point, then, from that point, when Mother Bureau wants to introduce the public elections law, we contain the, the NCRA, we, we try for conflict, bring together the civil register and the voters register as one. We synchronize the civil register and the voters register, which, which is a violation of, of the constitutional right of citizens to vote. Now, then, for don't take that action day, Cherry Koko in law firm, for don't take that action day to, to Alpha Web. If they care about democracy and care about the constitution and care about the APC winning the next election, they would have taken an action. Because the APC cannot win an election without their voters voting the next election. That magic would have used for, for winning election. Now, when they even announce the provisional voter statistics, the APC not get any response other than telling their supporters, their own members, for convincing them, they get more people that will register in Africa and Western area against uh, Southeast. How the, how, the, how the voter numbers then are free to, don't beat past Malam O in, 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 in license or way which they don't organize. That is not a question. That is not a question. The question is, how does the question is simple? One, the, the list, the number where ECSL announced, is it a number way reflective of the total number of people who have registered? No. ECSL on their own admission, they say they don't delete 250, over 250,000 people where they think say under age or alleged say they're under age or they also uh, 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 register two times, duplicate registration. The question is, how did they do that? Who are these people? In the first place, even the ACSL been tell we say, what to make first time voters and nobody for register? They say the machine them program, elect person for 17 plus, 17 and a half. By next year, go down 18 years, the machine they reject you because the machine no programmer for that. They said that make first time voters they encounter difficulty. The whole politician and the, and the opposition, the whole press conference all, on that line, the press conference, in that press conference, you had Richard Conte, you had all these APC parliamentarians, Abdul Kabo, and all the wire. The Medina at the press conference, APC, then call and cop, Femi Claudio School, they read a statement, talk about bring first time voters and we can make a demonstration, say, for come talk about how then go with birth certificate and all that. So now, after registration, people they will get birth certificate, they're not able to register, they say they not believe in birth certificate. People that way get 17 year plus first time voters, something are 18, something are 19. They're not able for register for vote, including elderly people. We show video of elderly people and say, I don't count, I've been voted last election, I can't now. they say they're not, they're not satisfied with me. They say, bring birth certificate. You bring birth certificate to say they're not trust this one, or the yellow one, or the blue one, or the green one. All this problem. After that, ECSL announced result and say over 250,000 voters have been removed from the voter from the provisional voters register on the allegation that they are underage or they have registered to two twice. Okay. Now the question for ECSL: How did underage people register? How they manage for register their name? When would I be the reject people there with the birth certificate? How did underage people, even people with birth certificate, when the first time they never register? The one day without birth certificate, how they manage to register? Or when I be registered and then we get birth certificate, we should say then at 20 years. Now, after when I register, I can't find out, say, no, let me lie. Where, where are the names of those people? Which part of the country they register? Which center register them? Would I register them? Because regist the registration, if, I, if an electoral re of official, electoral staff, member of the electoral commission, register, Somebody will not qualify for register a crime. There, are, there is a punishment for that. So both your members of parliament and the, the lawyer then now at the opposition, APC with the condom and get past 50 lawyers there with many law firms. They don't even need one cobo for, for hire a lawyer for, for going to court. They never went to court. They did not go to court to take easier to take the attorney general or seek interpretation, say would they take action. With the Guna Supreme Court for find out whether these laws, this public elections act of as a bill, you know, violate the the rights of citizens. Indeed, it violated the rights of citizens. They accepted that. But then still go fetter and pass the law. Then tell we say they don't remove all the laws, all the provision in the bill, in the way violate people the right for vote. Where did registration happen? What did happen? We find out in a lie in the lie. At that point. Then one pretends that ECSL just organized election without reference to law. 
So if that is the case, why the APC lawyer they now wait to say they're going to court, they're not being going to court for stop the registration and enforce ECSL for register people correctly? They're not been doing because they do not care about 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 winning the election. Many of these people have a 2028 agenda, whether they accept it or not. And me, I did the capacity for saying because I'm not a party member, I care less about uh, your political party fight. What I care about is the quality of democracy, the rule of law. We want quality governance, regardless of who is in power. If corruption continues, if bad governance continue, our work is going to continue. You can call us any kind of names. Today, when I, when I, yesterday, when I've been saying we're not SLPP, we're there for. Now, when I say now APC, APC now, they, they, they find them very difficult. Then they say, now this faction we're there for, now this other faction we're there for, now this other person we're there for, now this other. To be honest with you, I me not worry about, the, about those kinds of things. What I worry about is to ensure that things are working right. And in this case, your, your lawyers and your parliamentarians are actually engaged in a process for help mother view. They are both helping each other. Now, Mother Bureau knows with all of these things that I wouldn't talk about, Parliament's collaboration and complicity in the in the destruction of democracy under Mother Bureau. Now that they go into election, these parliamentarians, many of them know if they go contest for symbol seven and party now, they know we will win. So the need for making them appear say they're, they're credible. Now, that means they pretend say they're the parliament. So now go, then they are the same one who tell if we be not sell out, then go then go attack we, then go uh, then go ban we from parliament. By the end of May, Parliament in life don't know. What I mean, life don't know. The time of office go don't know. By April, now, yeah, end of April, make I just look at the calendar for a minute. Make we see what they talk about. Because where did they go and where did they go and tell you, say, uh, we don't ban uh, Lahai Mara and say that? No, their salaries are still running. And Albert Bundu do not get any power for, 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 for do that because members of Parliament are elected. They know that one day. So then just they don't develop a situation where they will continue to fool the people. Now, the first session of parliament, the first session of first sitting of parliament started on the 25th of April 2018. The state opening was on the 10th of May 2018. So the last sitting of parliament, according to their own calendar, is supposed to be on the 30th of April 2019. Then go to the prorogation when parliament will be actually closed by the 1st of May 29. You know, the last sitting. So we'd expect, say, going, going through this process by by the 1st of May or thereabout, uh, members of parliament will be ordinary ordinary citizens now. They will be looking for re-election back to parliament. So how can they enter into an election for parliament again with this kind of uh, ugly representation? We need to talk about. Now, you can begin 2019, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, now 2022, the council, your members of parliament did not convene a, you know, a committee to probe into all of the corruption that has been reported against Mother Bio. They never, they never raised them for, for investigator. Not only that, your members of parliament approved many of the loan agreements. We don't, we don't increase the debt burden as alone. They have approved all of the expenditure of the, of the government for the last five years. Coming now, right now, they, they, right now they, they are debating a new expenditure, the approval of a new appropriation act. And the reason why I haven't commented on it, I want to see what they will do with it. And they know, they know that I have deliberately withheld my opinions on what they, what they are doing and what is in the current uh, proposed expenditure. But these are the same members of parliament where, where they try for, say, they will approve further expenditure, even though over in the course of the last one year, the country has no audit service. There is no internal audit mechanism. Now they approve a budget for 2021. In that, in that period, Naeem, the president, dismiss, unconstitutionally suspend the, the, the auditor general and one of the deputy auditors because they try to inspect how government they spend money. Members of parliament, they just tweet pretend that they are against it. There'll be no say when that happened after two days, all money forget. Now it's over a year. The audit service has no auditor general that is appointed, legally appointed and went through parliament, scrutinized by parliament and approved by parliament. You cannot have anyone 
heading the National Audit Service without approval by Parliament, without being uh, legally appointed. So the current acting Auditor General is, is acting illegally because it don't go over a year now or more than a year since he started acting, since the removal of the substantive, the legally appointed Auditor General, legally approved Auditor General, was sent home. Members of parliament not ever raised an inquiry into it. They will tell you, say, no, the matter didn't court. They have the power to look into it. They also get the power for force, uh, uh, the, for force the judiciary for function appropriately. That matter is, is being tossed around here and there. No basis. Up to now, the people don't even know why the Auditor General was sent, other than the fact that the government failed to live up to the transparency commitment. The Public Accounts Committee of Parliament has not done anything. Members of Parliament in the opposition, they have their, all the opposition parties, no ever think say that a problem for a country forget an audit service without a legally appointed, scrutinized, and legally approved Auditor General. Abdul Aziz, who has been acting, worst of all, is not even qualified to act, to serve as, even if he were to be appointed, even if Madabi would generally appoint Aziz, then take and go to Parliament. Parliament is supposed to reject him because Aziz is not a chartered accountant and is not qualified to even Lara Telopia stated this in her papers. He say nobody will not qualify uh, for superintend the government or the supposed for head the audit service. So basically, the individual currently serving as the acting auditor general they not get the qualification for serving that capacity. Even if they be appointed generally, parliament is bound not to approve him because he not meet the criteria for serving that capacity. Now, this is the individual who submitted a report to parliament as the financial year audit for uh, 20, for 2020. Basically, parliament received from Abdul Aziz a fake audit report. Parliament, however, we, we pointed out to parliament that the, the report submitted to parliament is fake. It does not contain even details of the audit trail. And Lara Taylor appears in the court papers where he filed it, talks, say, she had never, she did not been complete the audit when they removed her from office. So which means any report taken to parliament cannot be seen as a report where Lara been non-completely left and as this can sign her. And by auditing practice, you cannot sign an audit report that you did not superintend. You know, you know, you supervise, you lead that. So if that is the question, it means the audit report submitted to parliament for the last fiscal year was an audit report produced by Abdul Aziz. The question is, how was Aziz able to submit a report to parliament within a month after he was appointed to be the acting auditor of the, of the audit service? Your members of parliament, no ever talk this. Your uh, lawyers have never raised this issue. They never, they never can go, even the audit service or Aziz a court say, you cannot. They will have even raised impeachment proceedings against the president. Because Charles Magai wrote an opinion in which he said if the president dismiss or suspend the Auditor General without the due process, a violation of the Constitution, and the consequences for that is an impeachment. Your members of parliament have not said anything about it. Now, then, very member of parliament here now, they go act concert in a parliament and say, then throw away benches, then broke flower, flower vase them. We then go, this flower vase turn overnight, said, and go take away, it costs two, 200 leos. Or then go take them for free, can't put and they say, we want to count the money, we want to wait till the camera, I don't count, we want to scatter all things in five minutes, and I hold the camera, and I say, all things don't pour. The following day, after that fight, then they go to parliament and pass the Political Parties Act, which limits. Now, if APC, the court uh, scatter one or so, members of APC will, if they say they want to register a new party for the next election, whether they dissatisfy with what they happen at APC, they cannot. So they not only don't hold a party, they also don't pass, strengthen the, the political parties registration commission so nobody will form they don't go they will prevent anybody we will break away like how as a uh uh ngc where you can them in your movement we don't tire for fat mother bio now slpp they say no then break away and go register ngc on the eve of the election or see for see do the same thing in this current situation with the current law it's a way of making sure even if they scatter apc then prevent them or get a candidate of a young choice people will be dissatisfied with an imposed candidate will not, will not break away and form a new party. That is what that new law is, is doing. And it's done in association with your members of parliament. Why? They want to be the next government. 
they want to be the next government. They cannot be the next government if APC not lost the next election. They want to make sure. And why would say APC? Because it's a majority. Of, not to say we want APC or we like APC, me for one. But the fact of the matter is the two troubles that we have. So if one trouble don't count, people they say this trouble don't, don't pass mark. It don't pass the trouble mark. So I try other trouble back. So in the two exchange of troubles, now the other people that we want for inherit this bad government, the architectural landscape from parliament, Jerry could call them, where they want for, they don't arrest the young party and overthrow the young party leader. And now the emergency will not seize the party. So but they can't take the executive, we'll hold up. We'll forbid the only way we'll do this for we'll make sure, say, anybody will be candidate. Say, let's not to be candidate now. The next candidate will fail. Now, like when I, like when I get a candidate who I want, how are I going to vote for her? If we are not getting a voter ID card, we are not registering. Like just ordinary sleep, we are get two hundred fifty thousand people first and ordinary register. They don't register. They don't register. No remove one. Now minus two hundred fifty thousand votes from potentially opposition people. So how that two hundred fifty thousand day will they not delete from the register? Go able vote. How the over fifty to hundred thousand or more ECSL in a fifty thousand people then picture not come. Not lie. Even if we assume 50,000, then 50,000, and they how, how are we going to forget them picture, then voter ID card? If you're able to get them voter's ID card, how are they going to vote? If they want to vote against Mother Bill, how are they vote against that? So now, if we take 50,000 away, it's a cell and also 200,000, 300,000. Now, how these 300,000 voters, the 300,000 are small voters, Mother Bill, the win way win the last election, not the winner with almost uh, 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 that amount of voters. Kande Yumkela in vote, Samsumana in vote, and Kamarimba in vote, we add them together in only 300,000 in the last election. Or if you reach seven, that's a small level. That's, you will reach a, if you pass in a small no more. So basically, the time of so all the voters that we vote for, for Yumkela, we vote for Samsumana, we vote for Kamarimba with the jail now. They, you combine them all, and that one day, and then delete so from the from the voter register. If then one day we don't register, they don't get a voter ID card. You like when I get candidate in the APC, we uh, want to vote for we will vote for her. Your members of parliament and your lawyers, do they care about, about that? That they need them for fed for, for me, they want to get the right for vote? Or now how for elect the members of parliament, either through the party list or the, the proportional representation? So why the fight in a parliament? Members of parliament, what make the union supporter and believe, say, the talk who they talk, say, they don't sell out and they try to help mother be you, and lie with the lie. Well, okay, we don't agree. We're not, we're not good parliamentarians. You have really represented the APC correctly. We don't agree. Me, I don't, me would agree for that. Now, the question is, why did you bring in a law to disenfranchise your own supporters? Why would I be lying to you and a supporter then say, when they go for register, they're not going to use NIN, they're not going to use NCRA? Why? Well, that's what I represent good, that's what I be good parliamentarian for bring law, for participate in the passing of law and laws where they undermine the right of your supporters, where they get a vote for now. Now that way, when I choose when I, when I are good and credible parliamentarians, why would I pass a law in a parliament where they uh, prevent citizens from, from forming, easily forming and registering and exercising their right to, to association in an easy way? Why would I decide to change the political party's law? Why would I pass in a parliament with no fight? Why would I decide to bring in a new law when I call National Security and Central Intelligence Act? Where they give a, create a new national security agency where you get the right now for going at somebody else and accuse you of subversion and seize your computer and seize your phone without even a warrant. So we want a kind of power, even with a party, we want to be against that. They want to be not used anti corruption against our young party people. So now we're going to use the security sector now for, for attack on our young people. And so she can still take kill most of the people in the APC. That is how. That is how the progression towards one party state. When the Public Order Act and all of these anti-democratic legislations, the APC, the SAPP laid the architecture for the development of a one-party state. The APC come and complete the process. They only complete the process. People, the Democrats within the APC, who we are opposed to that process of building the dictatorial state, they were all killed by the very APC people. So you can imagine the next government, even if it's APC, with the cyber law, the Political Parties Act, the Central Intelligence Act, with all of these bad laws then, where the members of parliament don't help mother be for create, and for them self the maker, if they end up in power, these are the laws they are going to use against you, the very APC people, before, before they will come to some of you, we not to part of our party. That is what they have done. They have basically created more dangerous laws and institutions where they undermine democracy by arming the next government 
whether it's Mada Bio, second term, or any other government will come after 20, 2023, you don't get the enormous powers for most citizens. They can use the Cyber Act, they can use the, the uh, Central Intelligence, the National Security Central Intelligence Act, and all of these other laws there. Sexual, now sexual Offenses Act, with them passed, name put Kamarimba in jail. So that is not to say, so there's a debate whether Kamarimba commit the offense or not commit the offense, but when government get law, they can use that anyhow, especially in a country like Sierra Leone, we are the people with power determine what the law says. The crooked lawyers and the politicians who are their bosses and the judges they appoint determine what the law says, not what, the, what is written in the law. They don't care about evidence. They don't care about the, the correct interpretation of the law. They care about how they can insert their own opinion into the law. The law then becomes the opinion of those in power, their colleagues in the bar, their colleagues in the bench, and by extension, they are friends and colleagues in parliament. And all of these crises, the people that will cause this crisis, constitutional, build constitutions where they probably empower president, now the same people in back. One of them is in parliament, Abbas Bundu. The other one now don't join uh, the APC lawyer and say they're going to court for, for address the problem where Abbas Bundu they don't create. The same people there. These are the same people some time ago, uh, in 1991, that the back means they don't write this constitution. What would they do? Abbas. Uh, you know, Timo will give the president some power. Uh, Abdullah, what do you think? No, I think Timo will add supreme executive authority. Now, then, why would they call best lawyers? Basically, these are all professionals who have been trained outside of the country in Cambridge, in uh, Oxford, and other countries. They have gone back home. What have they contributed? They've destroyed the country. So, I come back. This is a question, the conversation we have to have. How much of our PhD people they don't destroy the country? Not to how people with fake PhDs don't undermine the country. Now, how much of we are so-called real PhD people don't destroy the country? They are academics, professionals. Now you see them bobo there. Either people they have mentored, people who have trained who they have trained, or their own relatives. Their cousins, children of their corner, and, and now they add into the, into a problem with dilemma. So basically, in summary. On the question of the proportional representation in the fight in parliament is to the benefit of your members of parliament in the opposition. They want Mada Bio, they, by them together, they don't help Mada Bio for pass all indigenous laws they are. Mada Bio has to rescue their image and their reputation. So they have to create a fight in parliament. And then they use that fight, they say, Abbas Bundu, yeah, fire three of them, why? Uh, uh, then we will say now, if we be not collaborate, why they will suspend we? But not be suspended for four years. You have the choice to even say we're not going to parliament safe. If we're not really committed, ten women dismiss ten APC members. APC for say we're not participate in parliamentary proceedings until the law is upheld, until the rule of law, until all them tear away the happen they are done. They never did that. They went to parliament, cool and calm. In fact, not only that, they, the parliamentary and then they part of a process where the court overthrew the APC executive at all levels, from ward to district to constituency to national to regional to the diaspora. And take the party and Gian to the very parliamentary and, the, and their leader. Now the very parliamentary and their leader again went to court and their own committee went to court, not to protect APC voters or their supporters, but they went to court to decide uh, how this power away this illegitimate judge given for be for be interpreted. The judge not interpreted, the judge had more power, more, more rules and more orders. You see, you see today they don't announce the new uh, say you get seven vote. You know the list is already out. I would read the list before we how they all share. And this, if if they're not really, they will say a court. Yes, it's a court. But who is the judge? Who is the judge? These are the very judge. When are, when are the APC lawyers that have been challenged, some of have been challenged the legitimacy of this judge for practice law in Asalo. Then now when I come back, when I don't make a judge, when they uphold the new uh, judgment. So you've not been honest to your members. The benefit of the action in Parliament is about the SLPP helping their own allies, the compromised sector of the opposition in Parliament, to redeem their image ahead of the elections. They need that. The same way that they help Mada Bill for making redeeming image. Now they say one, the same lawyer there, when you look at their own people and back outside of, of Parliament, now they organize uh, the town hall. You remember that town hall? When they host, then call Mada Bill, say, can't defend you three years. Then parade all over there. What do you lie? You lie, say, uh, where you're going to Japan, you meet Anes Kuruma, left that day, APC been left that day, Naeem paid the debt and put another door, say, you know, enter now, pass it pay. That's what you tell before you enter. 
Your members of parliament, nobody in the APC is not challenger. Now we publish a lie, you lie. We publish record of Sierra Leone's history with Japan for the last 30 years. So even say over two hundred thousand dollars has was taken to Japan to Japan with Mother Bio and his wife. One cent they not bring back. Your parliamentarians have never investigated this because they know it's true. Instead, what they do? Now for hide behind the scenes and use the civil society, use them, then come lawyer, lawyers, for organize and host events. Say, come, can a town hall, can defend yourself. And talk say after all, you're a president, you get right for spend ten million. Now you're a head of state, you travel self, you get right for higher plane. They said that. Check the people who organize the event. Now the very event, I did matter you talk say you go for circular at Telopias. They ask her, do you sympathize with the with the attack on, on the Auditor General? He say, How about my wife? I know you sorry for my wife when they tell her I say the thief. My wife they cry in a net. Of course, your wife is a recipient. Is a recipient of illegal recipient of public funds. She has no business dealing with one Leon. The members of parliament know. Some of the members, when we first published that article, some of the members of parliament in the opposition called me. For say, we gave them the, 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 the bank statements. They said that they, go, they, they did research in parliament to see if when they approved the budget, there was even a line in the budgetary estimate that says office of the president. No, it was hidden. They pretended they did not know about it. And even when we show them, what did they say? They advised the anti-corruption commission, say, yeah, talk say, say, Kuruma, be they, be they also chief money. Instead of when they go, be they receive money. They haven't shown which evidence up to now when they said they haven't shown any evidence. The only evidence out there about a first lady receiving money from the Consolidated Revenue Fund as budgetary allocations is evidence produced by the African Express, bank statements, no allegation. Bank statements that were even accepted by the first lady herself. What did your members of parliament do? What did your lawyers do? They been going to court? Then they fool una, then they fool una. And why I am able to say this because they know, they know that this is the fact. I am not beholden to any one of them. I don't care whether they're vexed, whether they know they're glad. That's their own business. And you're supporting them. You don't go for let somebody tell you take poison, you drink her. For the person say, you know what in this poison, where they don't put here, I don't see that poison this. Before you die, I will drink her. That kind of love then are some kind, even the Shakespeare, the Shakespeare animal will write that kind of love story there. <laughs> I believe say Jesus and Muhammad no advice when I would do that. Anyway, I take a quick break and come back. Then I will talk about the second leg of this situation. I will sum up the why this fight like we didn't see in a parliament and Abbas Bundu, the talk where he talks they don't sack Lahai Mara and the two other APC MP that good for the APC MP than even the SLPP. Then from there I will talk about why JFK in your own lawsuit and, and the parliament are the same thing. The Mada Bio and the opposition they benefit from and not to the country and the NWC. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we don't do the first uh, leg of a conversation, which is why I think the the supposed um, the riot in Parliament is not different. By the way, the supposed riot in Parliament is not it's not different from the riot of August 10. Not the same thing. Not the same chaos. 
the Augustan uh, thing happened at the same time when um, we're going to talk about the the voter registration they start a few weeks before the voter registration start and it only happened at areas of the country where uh voters have been obviously disenfranchised where nin was used ncra was used to uh, frustrate people from registering and we said that before uh august 10 happened so while they are still and we still investigate august 10 but i just want for draw that parallel they quick in passing make una, make una understand on the eve of the uh, exhibition, the voter, the exhibition of the voters register. Nine parliamentarian and hip fair in a parliament. At the same time, again, Alpha West then they, 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 uh, then uh, Fisher passed judgment for say don't you don't release new orders. So they made you the APC supporters have something to talk about instead of to collectively supervise the exhibition and begin highlight uh, the infractions, these omissions of names and omissions of data. Now we self again. This is why this time. We decide when I notice we decide for copyright almost every video that we took that our people, our volunteers took on the ground for show say. Part of the reason many of your APC supporters and, and members or leaders in the transition committee and otherwise did not care about the omission of names. Then up to now, if you're if you if a lawyer they really care about Una care, when members of parliament care, they will have invited ECSL to parliament regarding the omission of names long since. From, from September, the Forbidden Dua. Or the Forbidden Dua a few weeks ago, we talk on Section 86, Subsection 2 of the Constitution, empower members of parliament. 20%, it's just like 20% members of parliament. 20% of all members of parliament, then they request an emergency meeting on any pertinent question. We important to them, to the speaker. The speaker is obligated under the circumstances to convene the meeting within a period not exceeding two weeks. The APC alone get twice that number. They don't need for lobby any other parliamentarian. They can request that. They, there's no record of them requesting that. So instead of a go fetch in a parliament and say, we don't throw a bench here and make so, they will have submitted a request for uh, an emergency meeting on these questions. But they never did because they know say the law for don't force Abbas Bundu for me to talk about that. What did they do? They say the whole uh, consultative meeting. This was NGC, the whole consult, they called civil society. Next thing we see, Civil society write statements and then they in favor of uh, proportional representation. This statement is there, issued by IGR and all of all of the civil society that are led by people who we know are, are SLPP members. IGR would be I need to talk about their civil society because IGR Andula Valley is a member of the SLPP. He was head of the uh, Kadisi Se campaign team team in 2012. Everybody knows that be part of Kadisi Se campaign group. So he's uh, heading IGR. Now it's a people interested to represent. These are the people we make a, 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 a consultation. So what am I saying? The proportional representation is even to the benefit of smaller parties in the real sense of the word. Not the real sense of the word. There is no way, there is every likelihood that the, the NGC and many of them smaller parties here will not be able to retain the current membership representation they have in parliament in a direct, in a single member constituency election. It's possible. Including even Yom Kaila, it's possible he's not going to be elected. Again, re-elected on a single member constituency in the, in the next election. In the real sense, people were able to vote. The same thing for the C4C. It happened to Charles Magai. 2007, the PMDC had more members in parliament from the Southeast. When the, when the SLPP recover from the crisis of them losing the election, and realize they have an interest in fighting to get back to power. By that election, all of the MPs and lost them, lost all of the MPs representing PMDC lost to the SLPP in 2012. You see, even Honorable, you go ask Honorable Sheka Samai, who is now an independent member of parliament, he went to parliament on a PMDC ticket in the parliament of 2007. He went to parliament for the first time, or he went to parliament in 2007 under a PMDC ticket. And the PMDC was a breakaway faction of the SLPP. By 2012, when they elect Mada we fail for winning the presidential election, the, one of the one of the things that the APC SLPP succeeded to do was to recover all of the lost seats in parliament. Honorable Shaka Samai only returned to was went out of parliament as a consequence of that. And a narrowly small vote, and I mean bitter with. He interpreted it to mean some kind of rigging. But if a proportional representation. Probably by that percentage of vote, he will have ended up in parliament too as an independent member. 
but now he's in parliament as an independent member of parliament so now they are even trying to say that proportional representation then they then they change they tweak the team for many address members of parliament and we're going to parliament uh, allow independent members of parliament for com com compete you see the narrow you see the crooked nature so what will it do we don't talk about last time what will proportional representation do if the current members of parliament succeed for take over them party then get the secretariat and then get the by the way one of the leading candidates i mean one of them candidates for for where they compete for secretary general now uh adi macaulay adi macaulay works in the law firm with alpha web and terry koko them and all of that these they if they're really interested in electoral democracy and real representation and the victory of, of the apc in the next election that be, before even announce before even go join case adi macaulay sign on the case with wara and uh, uh abdullahi conte and and jfk then for them to take case action long since they more go the court and stop ecsl for disenfranchised people they never did that but they want to be seen to be very credible they want to be seen now that make the now that make the suspend way about to say not suspend the high mara in two company there now help it help them because now they will go to the apc people and talk say no waiting you see they were they were fed for we they were fed for we at the party now you will know you will matter you that dangerous person we just go for come together that the party interest will for these things have to be said they have to be identified but when you put that argument there against all of the things that we don't happen in parliament, so even this law, when they talk about saying they fight one for, they not suspend. I want to be the fight for with the suspend. Not a creator, because if you had not encouraged debate around a new elections law, there would have been no question of proportional representation. A matter of been talk about that the town hall, we are the very, some of them are uh, we organize a town hall that we are there. We are opposition supporters opposition sympathizers we organized the town hall in april 2021 that is where he first mentioned when he was asked by umaru around proportional representation say yes you get for canvas the members of parliament for making them see so which means few months after that even the so-called public debate around proportional representation was also organized by the very civil society people eh? the same in the same town hall defending the same question of rational trying to rationalize the use of proportional representation so make the members of parliament not pretend to and say they're opposed to proportional representation. It's for them. It's, it has not to do with presidential election. It has to do with the, how they will shape the percentage representation in parliament. How they will allow smaller parties and back for get inside. By the way, these smaller parties are all part of COP. Then a different conversation. So there is no difference between members of parliament standing up in parliament and saying they want end the court action. In the case of parliament, Abbas Bundu in suspension of the members of parliament, help you don't help them. It helped them made and talk say this four year yeah, all who not represent who well when they say we don't sell out we don't stand against corruption not stand against this they're afraid we'll be afraid if we'll be taking this action if we we'll don't kick you out of parliament but now in a few months left like they say no suspend the winner not to real suspension really they're not getting nothing for lose again because now there is is of their own interest now to not even be in parliament and begin to get canvas now support for executive position and party and try for fight for making them uh, get into the next parliament again for the next five years and they will not care if Madabio is the next president, because then get new law will not increase their benefit, increase their salaries, increase their condition of service. So they will not suffer. They will not suffer. They will enjoy more in the next parliament than this current parliament. Now that, and so they don't, they don't program the welfare bill for parliamentarians. Now, on the question of what in the court action, so the parliamentary fight is a benefit of how it benefit now the government. By taking that action to the court, imagine it. No, if we say the matter in a court. We have seen in the court action where they can go again. In fact, when we look at the, the, the drafts of the court papers, because we not even see the final copies there. Me not, me not see, I, mean, I have asked the lawyers who have taken this uh, matter to court to give me copies of the papers they have filed. What they have received are drafts of the copies and a, and a supposed electronic receipt where they say that the receipt and the way they, where they give them after they file the case. We are still in the process of looking for the final copies, the final paper where they file. The court has not provided that to us. But from the draft papers, if we speak to that end the receipt, it shows that the APC, where they go to court, the Abdul Kago, member of parliament, and we can see the councillor. Now they're not the plaintiff. So basically, 
Abdul Kabu Nade Nade plaintiffs in the matter that was filed to court on the question of proportional representation. Make I make sure I read the names and correct the, the, the name of the uh, the name of the other counselor, some Catherine or Catherine or something. Make I just make sure say uh Now them, now them, now them, now them file papers. So JFK basically, now then they, now then they represent Abdul Kabo and this other APC counselor, woman counselor, where they, they file papers against so-called proportional representation, represented by uh, Joseph Kamara and the other um, APC lawyers, where they listen to the, to the thing. So let us assume for one that. The, the Supreme Court really sit on that genuine case, most in a, a real case, itself. the Supreme Court sit down on this case. And they look at it and they say, okay, now because of the noise we don't get, and we want for many members of parliament here appear credible, the Supreme Court gave a rule, pass a verdict, say, indeed, we don't find out, say, proportional representation is unconstitutional. They're not supposed to use that because the conditions we require the use of proportional representation do not exist. So it appears, say, the lawyer, they're going to court and don't win. Yes, we all know the move itself is unconstitutional. We know that. Day. So a Supreme Court panel rule against that. Okay. So it's a celebration. We say, oh, we members of parliament, we lawyer, they don't try. They don't can go court action against proposal. We don't make matter, we don't force her. If that happens, it's still not free enough for the question. Why did you not take ECSL to court for make the ECA, for make the court also pass an injunction on the question of the illegal way in which ECSL has been operating, including the question of the uh, deletion of names from the voters register, who not scrutinize up to now. Also, if the Supreme Court, um, if a Supreme Court decision against proportional representation is passed, now, now Mada Bio the benefit, why? It will even free up Mada Bio from the accusation that uh, it don't use the courts against opposition for the past 10 weeks on dinner power. Then it will appear the judiciary is independent. And the truth is the judiciary is independent. No. The judiciary has actually been used as a weapon against democratic organizations and the country, against political parties, against ordinary citizens. The, the same judiciary we, we put on trial somebody who is mentally challenged, blacker. So if the Supreme Court verdict is passed now, then we say, see, Trade, when uh, Sam Suman had been Saka, the Supreme Court being ruled in favor of an escrow. You see, Mada Bio, and Mada Bio not getting interest in proportional representation. In fact, it will happy itself for make the Supreme Court rule against proportional representation because then it will say, see, I don't get no hands in the judiciary. They don't even pass verdict against me, which is different from a verdict that was passed uh, when they sacked Sam Sumana. And what will it do? If, this, if the very court now, it will also free this thing about this mercenary judge that's used by the courts, Fisher, who has been used by the courts to destroy opposition party, an opposition party, or opposition politics in the country. So in a situation where Fisher will now pass a verdict against any opposition politician, especially in this case, Amura Kamara, say, without evidence, say, guilty of any charges of corruption, then there's no way you, the APC people, are going to complain against her because the court don't also say when a right against proportional representation, but when a wrong in this case. So you have to calculate some of the, all of these things and on the balance. If your members of parliament are really serious about democracy, they are really serious about the constitution, they are really serious about free and fair elections, the issues are there that are genuine, that affect voters, that affect their supporters, that affect the country. And those issues are the right of people to vote, to participate in the elections. They will not pass a law in parliament that will disenfranchise people from participating. We don't talk, say, the only way we might have been one for use for rogue election are two methods, two tactic two technique one for use law for suppress people from voting people away believe say then they are areas where we don't consider say na opposition strongholds that they wouldn't say i don't happen the second thing we say for making use the court for exclude members of the opposition where they believe say if they contest against them they go beat another election and that you will use case corruption cases, and then they will see the COI, they will see this current chance with case we don't talk about. Say there is no evidence. We will publish, so don't you say there is no evidence. The story will publish, the evidence will publish, and the case will then get a two different thing. 
We don't talk about even the complicity of the position in, in, in the matter. We don't talk about it. I will, we'll have a whole special conversation on that regarding the entire case itself and how the opposition is heavily involved in it. So voter suppression and candidate exclusion, the voter suppression is what parliament helped to do by passing the law. Now the court will also help Mada Bio in the process of excluding. And in this case, the major threat to Mada Bio, as we see it, which we don't see in the public domain, is the APC's candidate presidential candidate of 2018. In last 2018 elections, Madabio only urged him with less than 2% of the vote on both rounds. Now, five years later, you put empty ballot box today, you put Madabio now in a free and fair contest, the empty ballot box is going to beat Madabio. And within the APC and nationally, the only politician that has posed a significant mobilization challenge, population challenge in terms of gathering supporters that we hear and see, is basically um, Samura Kamar who has been out there. Now, you, the APC, can argue, say, no, not to get the support on the APC, that is your own. But what we're talking about is this. And both within the APC and the SL, for example, when we publish, when I, I go to uh, New York, I release a video and talk about the state of the of the building in New York and the permits, the people away respond to the video. Now, APC supporters, APC members, and the NGC, now they begin challenging the evidence. They say, why we not highlight two million dollars will be lost uh, on the APC term regarding the building? They, they, I tell them, if you have the evidence, publish it. The evidence, the evidence what we get now, we don't publish. You cannot expect me to publish evidence of your own accusation. I publish the evidence that is in front of me. It just had like a couple, so one or two, even APC contact. Hey, so Sabura be not. I said, no, go, go, not take on a flag bearer fight here and there. Don't bring it to me. I'm dealing with the evidence in front of me. And the evidence in front of me is that close to $5 million were transferred in 2019 to New York to build, to renovate the embassy. And the question is, if there be a problem left over by the APC, the money for that renovation has been stolen, why did Mada Biyo not arrest Samura until the time when we publish the story? And the story we will publish, we will say, Mada Biyo, the money that sent for soon as renovate the building, so you go hold somebody, we will be not left power. Not to be your case, but the opposition says, everyone that for happen. They advise that. They advise that because they've been looking for that. The same way they look for evidence for talk about it. These people went as far as paying money to public relations agency, media institutions for make try for fair way for make documentary on Sarah Rutai for manufacture evidence. They don't have that. They don't have that. With all the COI, when I when we don't see bank statement of any government ministry or institution with all the accusations, none. Now, when it comes to the question of verification of uh, voters register and all of that, what did we hear? The same at the general's office and all of the people had a full list of 30 people whose houses have been seized and all of that. It's calculated. So um, a court verdict, what in the, what, assuming that this court, a Supreme Court will rule against proportional representation, we really, there is no legitimate basis for professional representation if you're not being bring this law that will be benefit of mother bio it will free the judiciary from this evidence massive evidence of the judiciary being a tool of the executive branch in association with its rogue parliamentary uh, friends for muzzle opposition in the country it will also free the anti-corruption commission from this talk oh, we don't talk say these are the institutional framework of a captured state so both the people in the opposition and the ruling party, and they come together to so we'll try to rescue each other. This is what we call the dilemma. It's institutional dilemma. Parliament, the judiciary, the executive branch, they have all lost legitimacy and credibility. And the officials within these institutions, no. Say we cannot go into an election with this credibility crisis. The dilemma we're face now, how to make sure the people in us don't trust Madabio, trust the opposition leaders, trust the institutions of the country. The institutions and these leaders will definitely have to organize programs and activities to make sure that their bases, the APC base, the SLPP base, the general mass of the country that cannot read or that do not have the analytical, uh, critical analysis, when we infuse critical analysis into this kind of developments and understand them. You love your party people, you love your parties, you love these politicians, they are your neighbors, they are your friends, they are your relatives. Some of us, we decided that our relationships with individuals 
our school friends, the one that we're going to school with today, who we don't sit down, work out with party, we have been saving at them party then. So they don't call we, they don't call we names. We say, okay, no problem, but the two you will talk. And this, I want to assure you, is my own interpretation of the events in the country. And at the same, as a journalist, and a significant actor too, we interact with them people there over time, across time in the last 20 years at least, looking at it very closely. My interest here is to make sure if Madabu is going to get a second term, let him get a second term on a free and fair election. If your members of parliament want to be elected to parliament, let them be elected on a free and fair election. If una, if una young party people are for fed for be flag bearers not in party, make them able to come out and compete on a plain and open democratic arrangement. Doug, how will you survive the democratic competition of your party? You survive the national democratic competition in a clean way. We know say when you go to power, you are really a truly democratically elected leader. So when they engage you, we know they question you entrance legitimacy with a question your performance legitimacy how has the genuinely elected process has that took you to power that position that you got genuinely you have been able to use it but we cannot have the, the headache of having to start with the process to which uh, rogue politicians get to power and then begin to talk about what they will do with power. Because if you thief for going to power, you thief your way to power, you will thief back when you didn't have power. That's obvious. If you cannot be democratically elected in your parties, then you will not be democratically elected in, in the national politics. And if you are not democratically elected, you get to power, you will be a, just a common rogue, not just a common bandit with power. That's like arming, that's like giving a criminal political power with shoulders, with guns, with jails, with courts, and all of that. That's what, that's what you will have. You cannot have thieves and crooked politicians still in power in their parties, still in power at the national level, and, and then expect them to do good. No. What you will have is a, is a criminal president who has been empowered with shoulders and police officers, with courts and jails, and all of the paraphernalia of state, state power. What will they not do? They will not stop at anything. They're going to God no way to stop them now at that level. This is what we are against. We want to have a country where people with different voices, different views, different opinions will be able to live in peace, will be able to exercise their right to free speech, their right to association, their right to citizenship without hindrance, without fear. Now that we, we call for. Now that we, we aspire for. And your members of parliament have really created a more dangerous environment by 2011 to 2012, all of the country were hopeful that the, the dangerous provisions written into the constitution by Abbas Bundu, Ablai Conte, and others will be addressed by a constitutional review process. These are the legacy of the APC dictatorship. The, the 1991 constitution, which we call a multi-party constitution, we only appreciated it because it allowed for the existence of more than one party. But it is not a democratic constitution. It's a constitution that gives enormous powers to an executive presidency, the same way the Republican constitution did, the same way the one party. So the, the spirit of the one party constitution, the, the dictatorial spirit of the one party constitution is still wrapped into the 1991 constitution, which is why Anas Kuruma was able to dismiss Samsumana. And the courts will sit down and say yes, because it's a matter of opinion. The law is the opinion of those in power. Now. In 2011, in 2012, the entire country mobilized to have in their new, a new, their aspiration for a new democratic society written as part of the constitutional review process. The APC parliamentarians and the APC leadership, after all that process, they sit down, they take the, the constitutional review and the recommendations, they sat on it. Now, Madabio came to power in 2018. They now use parliament and the parliamentary power say that legacy that you will be decided for do for make we democratize the environment, the constitutional review, make we come with a new constitution. No, they started now and then they are saying don't pass a gender act and gender bill for include women and participation. No, open up the space. Every human being will be able to compete fairly. But what did they do in the last four years? They don't pass more secondary laws, then more additional laws, then we don't we don't. Not only strengthen the, the anti-democratic spirit, of, it don't make the constitution 
And whosoever we didn't have power now, you don't armor with more power, the more laws there. For most will everybody in the country. And that's what we fear. Now with the Cyber Act, with the National Security Central Intelligence Act, with a, 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 a tedious public elections law, with a, a, a all of these other dangerous laws that we will talk about now, we don't list them over time, including the fact that we get a new currency law, we don't introduce two new currencies. What have within the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive don't do in these four years? They have collectively, as the three arms of government and the people within them, created the architecture of a dictatorial state in the future. They don't make them impossible for somebody like me or other people in the opposition who are democratically minded, other people even within the ruling party who are democratically minded to be able to exercise their right to association, their constitutional rights, and their God-given human rights. But that they don't do. It is not something that's going to affect me alone. It's going to affect generations. The, the legacy of the one-party dictatorship of the APC under Sheikh Hastiti, now they deal with so today. That was in 1978. Almost 40 years later, we're still dealing with these ghosts of terror, of, ter of a terroristic state. Now, 40, over 40 years later, the very politicians have, have now created the architecture of a more dangerous state that will take us. And remember, they were they're in their 30s, their 50s. And this is supposed to be the internet generation, the technological generation, professionals, lawyers, bankers, uh, academics, so-called international bureaucrats, they superintended and supervised this process because they have a dummy, a shoulder, ex-shoulder, untrained shoulder. Because by 2012, the APC says, and I'm not a, not a good officer, not a brigadier. The challenge is his brigadier title. Basically, they challenge even his qualification as an officer, which is the only thing he has done in his life to be a military man. So now, Ending up at the level of the state, they have used that incompetence and ignorance on the part of the presidency to create this dangerous architecture. And it's through this. So when they tell you they are going to court, they are basically trying to help the government to look good. When they tell you they are fighting in parliament, they've been dismissed, the parliament and the ruling parties helping the opposition to look good. That they don't do. So I want to sign off here because um, and thank everybody that, that has uh, paid attention to this conversation. I see we get an appreciable audience. We'll continue this conversation. And don't forget, we cannot have democracy without good institutions. We cannot have democracy without the independence of the three arms of government, separation of powers, the rule of law. And this is not magic. We have to have men and women who are committed, generally committed to a country to do this. So I want to thank you and, and uh, for today and see you next week. Until then, um, make, we, make we begin look at the country and the future beyond these politicians and beyond these parties, if not, at the time now, we would would sow the seeds of our, of our own destruction. And that is what we're concerned about. It's about the soul and the future of Australia and the peace of the country. See you next week. <laughs>